In today's lesson, we are going to learn two laws, the law of detachment and law of syllogism, to use in logical reasoning. Um, so to do that, this whole process is now deductive reasoning. So like our last lesson, we used inductive reasoning where you looked for a pattern. This time we're going to use what we call deductive reasoning, which is the process of using logic to draw conclusions from given facts, definitions, and properties. So inductive reasoning is kind of like an educated, or making an educated guess looking at past examples. Deductive reasoning is using more concrete facts, definitions, properties to come up with a conclusion. So let's see if we can decide if we're using inductive or deductive reasoning. It says there is a myth that you can balance an egg on its end only on the spring equinox. A person has was able to balance an egg on July 8th, September 21st, and December 19th. Therefore, the myth is false. So, in this example, we're trying to decide, are we using facts, or are we looking at patterns to come up with our conclusion that the myth is false? Well, since we're looking at um, a certain observations, it's a pattern of observations, so we used inductive reasoning. Let's try another one. <clears throat> Is this using inductive or deductive? There is a myth that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made object visible from the moon. The Great Wall is barely visible in photographs taken from 180 miles above Earth, but the moon is 237,000 miles from Earth. Therefore, the myth cannot be true. Now this time, instead of looking at a pattern, we're looking at strict scientific research, so we are using deductive reasoning. Um, here's one more. There is a myth that an eel skin wallet will demagnetize credit cards because the skin of the electric eels used to make the wallet holds an electric charge. However, eel skin products are not made from electric eels, therefore the myth cannot be true. Is this inductive or deductive? We're using scientific research, research or um, concrete examples to show that these aren't made with electric eels so the wallets cannot be demagnetizing anything. So we used deductive reasoning. So while we're looking at in, uh, deductive reasoning, um, if the given facts are true and you apply the correct logic, then the conclusion must be true. So we're going to learn some laws that we can use um, to come up with arguments and to decide if certain arguments are true. So the first one we're going to learn is called the law of detachment. Um, with symbols, we say with the law of detachment, if P then Q is a true statement, so if I have a true conditional st statement and we see that P is true, then we know that Q is true. So if I have a true conditional and I know the hypothesis is true, then we know, yes, the conclusion is true. So here's a little table that I thought kind of helped um, and a good example. If I get over 90%, I will receive an A. I got 96%. So notice this is a true conditional statement. And our next statement said, yes, the hypothesis is true. So what can we conclude from that? We're going to say, then I can say that, yes, the conclusion is true. So if a true conditional and a true hypothesis, you can conclude that the conclusion is true. Now, here's another example. We're going to just try to decide if our conjecture is true using that same law. If the side lengths of a triangle are 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters, and 13 centimeters, then the area of the triangle is 30 centimeters squared. The area of the triangle is 30 centimeters squared. So our conjecture, given that this is our a true statement, is that the side lengths of our triangle are 5, 12, and 13. So first we want to look at our um, conditional statement. Look for the hypothesis and conclusion. So if, whatever comes after the if is our hypothesis, the side lengths of a triangle are 5, 12, and 13, then our conclusion will be that the area is 30 centimeters squared. Well, the statement that they gave us matches the conclusion of the true conditional. But this does not mean that the hypothesis is true. So remember that the law of detachment, if this is a true statement, I need to know that the hypothesis is true to say that the conclusion is true. There are um, other dimensions of a triangle that could give us 30 centimeters squared for the area. So law of detachment shows that this is not valid because it doesn't match our law.
Okay, in the World Series, if a team wins four games, then the team wins the series. The Red Sox won four games in the 2004 World Series. So we want to decide, is our conjecture valid by the law of detachment? The Red Sox won the 2004 World Series. So we'll go back to our conditional, and we're going to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. So if, in the World Series, a team wins four games, then, our conclusion, the team wins the series. So then, the statement they gave us, the Red Sox won four games, matches the hypothesis of a true conditional. They won four games. So, by law of detachment, we can say that yes, they did win the series, the World Series. So our conjecture is valid by law of detachment. Since these seem kind of confusing, we're going to do one more. Determine if this conjecture is valid by law of detachment. If a student passes his classes, the student is eligible to play sports. Ramon passed his classes. So we're trying to decide is the conjecture Ramon is eligible to play sports valid by law of detachment? So first we look for hypothesis and conclusion. If the student passes his classes, that's our hypothesis, and our conclusion, the student is eligible to play sports. So if P then Q, true statement. And they told us that Ramon passed his classes, so they said, yes, your hypothesis is true. So we can say it is valid that the student is eligible to play sports. So we know that Ramon is, val is able to play sports, and our conjecture is valid. Okay, we've got another law we can use to create valid deductive reasoning is the law of syllogism. This allows you to draw conclusions from two conditional statements when the conclusion of one is the hypothesis of the other. Um, I think this is very similar to the transitive property. Um, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. This is very similar to that. Um, so if I have two conditional statements, if P then Q, and if Q then R, notice that Q, this conclusion, has to be the same as this hypothesis, then I can um, connect these and say then if P then R. So here's a good example. Um, given, if I oversleep, I will miss the bus. If I miss the bus, I will have to walk to school. So conjecture, if I oversleep, so the hypothesis of the first, then I will have to walk to school. The conclusion of the second, because this, hypo this conclusion matched this hypothesis. So that would be um, using law of syllogism to make a valid conjecture. So let's try a couple examples. Um, determine if this is valid by law of syllogism. If a figure is a kite, then it is a quadrilateral. If a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon. So notice that the hypothesis, or the conclusion of our first conditional, it's a quadrilateral, is the hypothesis of our second. Let's kind of map this out with our letters first to see that. But kind of notice before you start, let P, Q, and R represent the following. So the hypothesis from the first conditional was that we had a kite. The conclusion of the first was that we had a quadrilateral. Q is also the hypothesis of the second conditional, and R is the conclusion. So we were given um, P then Q and Q then R. So since Q is the conclusion, since those match, we can say yes, then P then R. So the conjecture is valid using law of syllogism. Okay, here's another one. If a number is divisible by 2, then it is even. If a number is even, then it is an integer. We're going to decide, with law of syllogism, is this a valid conjecture? If a number is, in, is an integer, then it is divisible by 2. So remember, we're always trying to use the hypothesis from this statement. I do see the hypothesis in this statement. And the conclusion of the second, I do see that. But let's look at the orders that we're using. So if we use X, Y, and Z instead of P, Q, and R, it doesn't really matter which letters you use. If a number is divisible by 2 was our first um, hypothesis, then we saw um, it is even. So we'll call Y a number is even. So we said if a number is even, then Z, a number is an integer. So we are given if X, then Y, and if Y, then X, but our um, conjecture said that if a number is an integer, then it is divisible by 2. Well, the law of syllogism says I can use the first hypothesis 
to say then the second conclusion, but this went backward. It said the second conclusion, then the first hypothesis. So that did not fit. So we would say that that is false because it does not fit law of syllogism. Okay, one more. If an animal is a mammal, then it has hair. If an animal is a dog, then it is a mammal. So we're going to try to decide if an animal is a dog, then it has hair. Is a valid statement with law of syllogism. I don't see that this, that it has hair and an animal is a dog matching, but let's see if we sort it out with letters. We can mix some things around and see if it'll work. So if an animal is a mammal, we're going to call that X. Because we came, uh, that came first, then the animal has hair. That was our first type uh, conditional. If, so if X, then Y. But now we have a new statement. If an animal is a dog, so we'll call that Z. An animal is a dog, then it was a mammal. So we're going to keep, we don't have to redo this one because we have already got that as a variable. So we are given, um, let's go back again. If we are given if X, then Y, but then we're giving if Z, then X. So, is this matching our law of syllogism? Do we have some grouping right here? Not necessarily, but we have, if we switch these, notice that we can make this our first sentence. If this conclusion matches this hypothesis, then I can say if Z, then Y. So since X is a conclusion of the second and the hypothesis of the first, we can conclude if Z, then Y, which is what the conjecture said. If a dog is an animal, then it has hair. So we're going to say yes, that is valid because it matched the law of syllogism. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is given some information, we're going to see if we can draw a conclusion. So if this is my given information, 2y equals 4, then z equals negative 1, and if x plus 3 equals 12, then 2y equals negative 4. Let's see if we see some relations here. I do see a matching hypothesis and a matching conclusion. So it looks like we're going to use law of syllogism. Then it says, um, if x is plus three, x plus three is twelve. What can we conclude? Well, if we match these two together, we would be saying if x plus three equals twelve, then match those. Z equals negative one. So our conclusion using law of syllogism would be that z equals negative 1. Let's try another one. If the sum of the measures of two angles is 180, then the angles are supplementary. If two angles are supplementary, they are not angles of a triangle. So, I do see a matching piece. The supplementary is the conclusion here and the hypothesis here. So I'm going to guess if the sum of the measures of two angles is 180, they are not angles of a triangle. And then the information we're given is that these two angles, 135 and 45, well, let's think, 135 plus 45 equals 180. So though the sum of these two angles, A and B, are 180. So I bet we could say that those angles are not angles of a triangle because of law of syllogism. So we'll try some of these in class. It is kind of wordy. It's kind of difficult. But if we practice this, watch the video again if you need to and ask as many questions as you can. I'll see you soon.